بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Our struggle in the modern times is what? I don't worry about the next generation becoming Christians or Hindus or even atheists. Although the atheists now are becoming very aggressive, they're becoming fundamentalists in their own way. You know, but that's not the challenge. I think the biggest challenge we have in the modern times as Muslims is the dilution of our identity as Muslims. Because a Muslim is somebody who prefers Allah's will and his commands over his own likes and dislikes. And that is the challenge. A person would still say, yes, I'm a Muslim. But in this matter, well, you know, I want to do this. I know Allah doesn't allow that, but I like it. You know, and, and that is the biggest challenge that we have during the, our time. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this phenomenon of preferring our own desires and our, you know, like and dislike against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, actually, you have become worshippers of yourself. So it's not that, you know, the challenge of Christianity or Hinduism or atheism. It is actually we against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, this is where we have to realize in, our, in, in uh, Surah 25, Ayat 43, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَرَعَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُهُ هَوَا Have you seen a person who takes his own desires as his God? He's using the word ilah for our hawa. Have you seen a person who has taken his own desires as his ilah and his God? That is the challenge. And this goes against the meaning and reality of the word Islam, which means to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if, God forbid, a person goes constantly in this state of preferring his own, you know, decisions over the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take that lightly. There is an ayat in ayat, Surah 45, ayat 23, again, similar words in the beginning, أَفَرَعَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَضَ إِلَهُ هَوَاهُ Have you seen the person who has chosen his desires as his Lord? وَعَظَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَطَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوًا when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realizes that this person now has fully gone in that path, and then Allah abandons him. And that abandonment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate failure. When he says he seals his ears and hearts and puts a veil on his vision. And so this is something we have to realize that our challenge is constantly to fight against our desires. So Ibrahim saw a dream that he is actually sacrificing his own son. He saw it once, twice, three times. And so finally he says the words of Quran, O oh my son, I have surely seen in a dream that I am sacrificing you. And let me know what you think. It's a very serious issue. So he wants this son to be with him, to buy the idea, not just to look at it as a command. And Ismail as Allah described him earlier, he says, Oh my father, do whatever you have been commanded to do. If ma tu'mar, you will find me, inshallah, among the sabirin. So this entire Eid that we have is actually is celebration of Ibrahim and Ismail's success in submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in totality where the father is willing to you know sacrifice the life of his own son of course that was not the intent of Allah he just wanted to see the willingness before the pilgrims go to the Qurbani on that day in Mina they have to go and stone the pillars 
This is a point of reflection that when you want to submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not going to be easy. There will be many, many obstacles and hurdles in your way. You know, these pillars which symbolize the shaitan, three places where he appeared to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And you know, when these deviating forces come, they don't say in a clear words. Sometimes they put it in a very, you know, uh, intellectual way you know shaitan told Ibrahim what are you doing if you do this don't you realize that the people who will follow you the generations to come everybody would be you know sacrificing their son you are setting a wrong precedence that's not the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so it's not that he comes and says you know don't don't follow the command of Allah he puts it in a very you know, kind of a ra rational and logical way. And so, when you look at this symbolism of stoning the three pillars in Mina, we're talking about the external, you know, evil forces and obstacles in form of shaitan and junood shayateen. He has an army. But remember, there is a bigger shaitan inside. And that is where we are to stone there also, constantly. Because and that is the hawa, that is the desire. We are to control it, not that we have to suppress this totally. It is there for a meaning. And it has a useful purpose, but it has to be controlled and fulfilled within the dictates of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since we are Shia of Ali, let me end with the example from a companion of Ali who died in his lifetime, in the lifetime of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And Ali praises him for about seven or eight good qualities. And he says in Nahdul Balagha, he says, you know, you should try to acquire these qualities. If not all of them, at least some of them. And one of them is very interesting, relevant to this theme. He says that the good thing about him was that whenever he faced a situation which was unclear, what I would term as a gray area, it's not clear whether this is allowed or not. When we have this kind of situation, you know, I get questions. Maulana, is it haram in Quran? Well, Islam is not only Quran. That that's, Quran also says, whatever Rasul gives to you, take it. Whenever, whatever he forbids, stay away from it. So Quran is also telling you, go to the Rasul. Sometimes things are not in Quran, it is in Hadith of uh, Rasulullah. And the sayings of Aimma is actually for us extension of the Sunnah of Rasulullah. And this is where Amir al-Mu'minin says, whenever he found himself at a crossroad, in a doubtful situation, he would look at his own ego and desire. And he would say, okay, what is that I like? And then he will decide to go the other way. Because the other way would be the path of precaution. To make sure I did not give in to my own ego or my desires. And that is the Shia of Ali that he expects us to be. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.